by the people. Today, we're going to get off with a little story. We're going to talk about Miss Classy. And it fits into the narrative of family, LLCs, trust, and why sole proprietorships are just really garbage if you're trying to achieve something in life. My opinion only. But we'll start off with Miss Classy. Met Miss Classy, and if you want me to tell you the dirty story that comes along with this, just put dirty story in case I forget. Met Miss Classy, and we'll just fast forward to her father had died the year before. And they had significant assets because he had a will, but a lot of his stuff was in probate. And I think it is because these were country people, so to speak, not very sophisticated. Because in the last will and testament and some other stuff, and I was just like, why is this in probate? Well, he had a lot of hospital bills, and I was like, well, the hospital bills. And I'm like, you stroke out the check for the hospital bills or his insurance, and it was Medicare, and it was all of this stuff. But by the time I arrived on the scene with my cape flowing in the breeze, uh, she had paid close to 100K in attorney fees. And I never knew the exact size of the estate, but it was close to about 800,000, including the houses and everything that was in it. And so more than 10% of the estate was gone and the attorney fees. And then there was taxes and other stuff. So I had her craft a letter and address it to the attorney. And it's like, I want a final accounting of this, 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 or this needs to be closed within the next week. It was closed because they were just essentially milking her. Now, how does one avoid this? There's something called a living trust where it's where you put all of your assets in a trust and you dig, designate your beneficiaries and you can completely avoid probate. Now, probate gets a little dicey. Probate can be long and there's a lot of fees in probate. So that's just a lesson for you. Now, let's talk about the assets. Unfortunately, Many people don't have assets. Fortunately, you're listening to Hustlers Kung Fu, so you're in the process of developing some assets. So I'm going to tell you how you need to do it and how you need to structure this because I see a lot of talk about people wanting to be a sole proprietor. Should I be getting an LLC? I mean, for the amount of money these things cost, and even if you spent two grand on advice, the benefits are so numerous over a sole proprietorship. And also, if you're doing a sole prop, you're not really that ambitious or you're just crazy because there is no way that I, Glendon Cameron, would form a business or have something that comes in contact with the public and not have it in the framework of an LLC. That's just crazy talk. But many people, and this is something else too, you're trying to make money, but you're trying to save pennies. Because to me, the cost of LLC protection, trust protection, all this stuff is literally pennies on the dollar in the protection they provide. Like I give you a case, I give you an uh, example. I know some people who have done this and it's called a bypass trust. Essentially, if I was to give you just pick your, your name out, like, we'll, like Carl, we'll pick out Carl. And I want to give, you know, and I died and I gave Carl all my assets. I can do that as a one-time exemption. Anyone can do that. So a married couple only has one exemption. So if one partner dies before the other partner, that exemption is used. But you create a bypass trust and essentially you get double exemptions. And then you can leave your stuff to your kiddos or whoever you want. Humane society, well, you know, some people do that tax-free so the thing that gets me that causes an agitation that causes drama is people are so short-sighted because it's like i'm not going to spend that 1500 or that two thousand dollars now but i'm going to literally spend hundreds of thousands of dollars in taxes later that's just crazy and part of that, I think, is no one's really telling you the consequences of not putting this stuff into play now. 
I mean, if you're a young couple, last will and testament should, you know, should do you right, possibly. But if you're a young CEO, let's say you're 25 years old and you are CEO of a $25 million company, your situation is going to be totally different and you need proper estate planning because if you out in your Lambo, peel out, flip over and, you know, crack your skull, split your wig, guess who gets all that money? The state. That's right. So you can have some nieces, some nephews, some people you can benefit. That money goes straight to the state. And then if they can find some hairs after, you know, they get their cut. So there, there's a lot of reasons for this. Now, let's see. So prop stupid. We covered that. I'm, I'm not spending a lot of time on that because anyone here at Hustlers Kung Fu knows they need an LLC. They need a family LLC. They need a holding company. They need an operating company. You guys know this. I don't even have to explain this to you because this whole sole prop thing is nuts. And let's say you started an e-commerce company and you wanted to do it as a sole prop. You know what that says about you? Bensworth. Today's person is Bensworth because I don't think anyone's named Bensworth, but who knows? Bensworth is trying to save a few hundred bucks, maybe a couple of thousand dollars because he don't want to pay that. But because he doesn't know how to set up a holding company, an operating company and the corporate and tax structure of it, Bensworth ends up paying what used to be. And this is just something that he ends up paying a lot of taxes. Or let's say Bensworth is kind of smart and he files an LLC, a single member entity, a disregarded entity. And then he has to pay because it used to be 35 percent corporate tax plus a 20 percent self-employment tax. So he was paying 55. That's right, Bensworth. You're paying 55 percent of your money up in some taxes. But now, thanks to Trump, doom, 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 uh, you can shave 14 points off of that. So you, now you only be paying 41% of your money in taxes versus 55% of your money in taxes. That's still a lot of money. If you shaved off, if you started the operating company and you had, no, you, you started a holding company, then you had an operating company, and then you got your tax game together, you would possibly be paying, save yourself. 20%. So you only be paying 20% in taxes. So you get to keep 80% of your money. What? 80%. That's what we do here. So we talked about the bypass trust, the living trust. And I'm, I'm going over those because this is my thoughts. I think everyone needs a family LLC. Even if your family consists of just you right now because one day you might meet Mrs. Wright. You might meet someone so sexy, so classy, so you just I got to scoop that up. I got to put a ring on it. And then that starts because see, you have your holding company. Let's say let's say Bensworth, you're 18 years old. You go out, you create a holding company and you don't really know what you want to do out here in the e-commerce land. So you just sit on it and you pay your fees and your company's two years old. Not a lot. Don't mean anything. But when you get to like eight years of being in business and find out that your company is 10 years old, that counts a lot. So you um, start this e-com business. And because you are a hustler, you start an e-com business. You start a service business. You get some affiliate marketing. So you got like four or five streams of income. You got a tax problem, bruh. You got all kinds of situations going on there because you could easily be paying way more taxes than you should because you don't know. But, hey, you're here at Hustlers Kung Fu. You now know. So you got your holding company. And then, you know, she she's so sweet. She She's just so delicious that, you know, you create an operating company and your wife is actually really good with e-commerce. You know, she's good with photography. So you put on there. And then you give her a percentage of the company. Now, let's talk about that. Now, many folks who do these things often like, well, she's my partner. She's my rib, right? So they give her like 50% of the company. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. So what you do is you sit down and explain to her and you say, look, look, 
this was in going on before you even stepped on the scene. But now you are my wife. We are legally married. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you like 20% of the company and put you on the payroll. You see, you can't do both. You like, you get 50% of the company, you get 50% of the money. And you started it and you, it's like typing and listing stuff to two, three o'clock in the morning. You were like cleaning out storage auction units. You were buying, you were like hustling, you were sweating, you were busting. And you're just gonna easily give someone 50% plus voting rights. Nah, playa, don't do it like that. Don't do it like that. So you give her 20% and you give her a generous income. You do not give her half of the company's profit. Because if, you know, y'all go down the road and you break up in 10 years from now, there is something that's called a precedent. Precedent is a fancy legal term for history. So she ain't used to half the company and she's not used to half the money. She's at 20%. She's got a salary. And it's much easier to buy her out of the company at 20% than it is to buy her out of the company at 50%. Because you still own 80% player, Bensworth. Yes, you own that. And, you, you know, your heart is broken, but your business isn't broken. And then you can put language in there where she cannot force you to sell anything. And you can make her payments. That's what you can do with a family LLC. Now, that's a sad, sad story, Bensworth. But let's say... Let's go ahead and tell a story with a happy ending. Let's say you meet the love of your life, right? And it's good. It's like, she's your rock. She's really your rib. She even donated a kidney to you. She gave you a kidney. And you get married and you build this wonderful business together. You've been married 40 years. Y'all look like mom, pa, Kettle. She finishes your sentences. It's a wonderful thing. And then y'all have four kids and y'all built this five, 10, 20 million dollar business. Right. And you want to leave it to your kids who are well adjusted, well raised or good kids. And you don't want to pay this crazy estate tax. So what you can do. Player, did you know that you can give your kids twenty eight thousand dollars of the company? And pay no taxes. Nobody pays taxes on either side. Nobody. Nobody pays taxes. Because you're married. You know, uh, the limit for a single person is 14 k So you got these three kids and you just take that 28 grand and you split it amongst the three of them every year in the form of company stock. So over a period of time, you give these well-adjusted kids part of the company. And then that sad day comes along, you know. Maybe Ma goes first. Maybe Pa goes first. Everyone is down in the dumps and everyone's grieving because, you know, these were amazing people, good parents, uh, build up a community, did the right thing, raised great kids. And then, oh, there ain't no probate. There's no tax consequence, consequence triggered because at this point, the kids own the company free and clear and you pay no taxes. That's why when I see this stuff and people talking about the state taxes, I'm like, no, no, there's ways you can do this. There's so many ways you can do this. You don't have to pay those estate taxes. And that's how you know, and you can quote me when people tell you there's no way to avoid this. It just depends on how generous you are, how trusting you are, and what kind of family you have, situation you have going on. But that's how you can play that game. There's so many ways, you know. So what you can do is set it up where if y'all part, you're not drastically financially hampered. Or if it goes on and it's a beautiful thing, because getting married and having kids and staying married is a beautiful thing. And you stay the, together until death do you part. And the kids benefit. And nobody pays taxes. That's a wonderful thing. One of the reasons I learned all this stuff is when I rented my, my 10,000 square foot, well, actually, when I rented my, I sub rented from Ted first, and then he had to get the approval of the landlord, and I made my check out to the something, something, I'm not going to put their names out there, something, 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 trust. It was the name of his kids, both of them, I had to write out their whole names, and trust and this is where the check went to because the building that i was leasing from him was in a trust 
The kids own the building. And then I know it was an irrevocable trust because I say, you're ever going to sell this? He said, no, I can never sell. I can never sell. So I estimated, because I, you know, I, I got nosy. He had about 35 buildings, 35 to 40 buildings from what I can gather. And about half of them were empty. I will talk about that in a minute. And I assume that those two kids were getting about, well, I don't know if they were getting this per month because he was a very smart guy. But every month there was about 120K going into the business. And she was a stay-at-home mom and he was an attorney. So the way that I figured that he has this set up where they were getting quarterly dividends because then that would be, or he could have had it set up where the money sat for a year, then they got it next year. And then that was just pure 100% capital gains. Uh, that's probably the way he did it because they were already set up pretty nice, but there's so many things you can do with an LLC. And for us, for us black folks, all right. You really need an LLC. You need a holding company. You need a family LLC. You you got to stop, you know, living on the humbug because that's where a lot of you are. You're living on the humbug. You're trying to piece some stuff together, and it's just not going to work. It's not going to look good. It's not going to work. Now, part of the family LLC, and this is why you need to have a holding company before you get married and all this other stuff. So you have time to digest this stuff because it's a lot of stuff to learn. It's a lot of stuff to wrap your brain around. But you get this and you spend some time studying it. And then you can create an operating company if you don't already have one or another LLC and give her part of that and pay her and establish expectations and history and precedent. Because if you've been getting like, you know, 20% of the company and you've been getting, um, let's say, you know, $5,000 a month, guess what? You cannot say, I'm a helpless and harmless little woman. He don't give me no money. No, you've been getting 5K a year. I mean, 5K a month. You got 20%. So you've got income. You cannot... Say, I'm helpless. You cannot say, I want alimony. You see how that works? Learn this lesson from Tricky Ken. <laughs> you know, Tricky Ken. That's what I call him. But uh, Tricky Ken, whenever he, he would talk to you, if he ever did this, ah, that, that thing, he was lying. Uh, it was just this un, uh, subconscious flinch that he would do. And I knew it was like, all right, he's lying. But Tricky Ken had his wife on the payroll. She never came to the office. But Tricky Ken, between business environments and some other stuff he had, um, player was probably pulling in about $4 million a year. So if he and she ever parted, she could not go, I have no money. And see, mentally, he was already used to shelling out that money. See, it took me a minute to understand because, you know, business environments, I learned so much there. Because habitually, when, let's say, you are living in a condo, right? And your mortgage is six, seven hundred bucks a month. Then you see this house and you want to get it and it's going to be twenty five hundred. That's going to be real tough nut to chew on for about six months to a year because that's a big jump. And it's past your norms and it explodes your perspective, right? So what I've learned is to build habits, to build your perspective. Like, you know, and I'm not bragging and boasting. My mortgage is 3,400 bucks a month, right? So in the beginning, it was like, good Lord, this is a lot of money. But now I'm like, so I'm prepared and I'm mentally set for that amount. So it's not a problem. But if I was coming from a situation where I was paying nothing and then I had to pay that, I'd be freaking out like good lord that's too much money that's too much money man well you want me no 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 i'm gonna go ahead and get me one of the one bedrooms uh i'm gonna you know go ahead and get me some furniture from salvation army i'm gonna do what i need to do what i'm saying is if you're in the mindset of keeping it 
what it is as a sole proprietor, more than likely your business is never going to expand. Let me say that again, because there's something I've been doing. And I had a lot of haters a few years ago. And me, I keep track of my haters. I keep my eyeball on them, right? And I've noticed that most of them are in the same exact place or worse off than they were, or they're gone. And the ones who listened to me, because there was one, he listened to me. And I'm, I'm about to see um, if he's still on YouTube because his business tripled. And he even gave me a shout out and credit, so I know he listened to me. Uh, let me see if he's still around. I don't think so. Uh, let's see. Dow. Oh, wait a minute. Let me see if he's around. I'm just doing this. I'm not going to show you. I'm not. I'm not going to bring any bad. I'm not going to bring any bad juju back. Not doing that. Let sleeping dogs lie. Let's see. Make sure that I am not sharing that with you. And uh, he actually is not doing that well on YouTube, but he is um, he's posting some totally different content. Yeah, he really he left for three years. He left for two years and some months, so he ain't even doing that. So that's just wow. What's up, the Wild Jones Report? What's going on? Diana Thompson, Young Brandon, James Alexander, Al Gordon, this dude Bakes, Wayne Frazier, Tone Lee, what up? Mr. Maniac, Be Real, what's going on? Quentin Hodge. Uh, Ron Stevens, Glendon, how much does it cost to be an LLC? How much does it cost to form an LLC? Depends on where you are. What state are you in? But the short answer is anywhere from 60 bucks up to 1500 depending upon your state and their laws and situations. What's up, Charm Smith? Zola, what's up? Soul Academy killing me with these eyes. My Amito, what's up? Miss Finance. Soul Academy. You ain't going to be able to get 100% of your money. You can probably get 80, maybe 85, but you ain't going to be able to get 100%. Rugged Collins, this is the old school knowledge that develops old money long term. Yes, it is. Tone Lee. I saved thousands of dollars on my taxes last year because of my LLC. You know. You know. What's up, George Bush? My Emil Jones. I read more on the holding company and definitely would go this route. Could I run my holding company as a consulting company that uses my other... Oh, no, no, no. Holding companies do not do business with the public. A holding company's simple purpose is to exist to collect money. That's it. That's all it does. It don't do nothing else. Because, see, if it only collects money from this other company that it owns, it can't be sued. It can't be garnished. None of that stuff can happen. Well, I mean, if you got some major problems with the Internal Revenue Service, yes, yeah, they can come get your money. But, um, no, you, you don't do business through your holding company. Nope. Ultimus Filming. Oh, thank you. Hey, Glenn, I'm enjoying all the courses I purchased. I found them extremely valuable. Just wait. There's some more stuff that's coming. I'll get into that later. What's up, Tyrone? I like to hide the money special from yesterday, but I like the... Um, okay. Hold on, Tyrone. We'll get to that later because I'm going to break that down. <laughs> oh, this channel's for men. I, I keep saying that, but people don't act like they don't know. Joshua, I'm opting to get my body frozen like Walt Disney so I can come back. That's a lot. That's a thing, y'all. That really is a thing. What's up, Barry Bishop? Chris Monroe? Randall Riley? <laughs> Cartel? You know, I, I really don't get nowhere near the hate I used to get, not even close. But I changed the content and I moved away from the, uh, you know, I said a lot of controversial stuff. So I, I did ruffle a lot of feathers. Charles Smith, if you start a regular LLC first, can you go from that? 
there or do I need to start another LLC to implement your trust and operating? Or can the old LLC be the parent company? Just kind of depends because you've asked a lot of questions. You've asked some major questions. Uh, my question to you is, do you have an LLC that you started that doesn't do business with anybody? He's an old fuddy-duddy. Midwest, what's up? Perception meters, one of the specific S-Corp. All right, here's the thing. An S-Corp is a tax election. So you, you form an LLC, right? You can convert that LLC into an S-Corp by filling out a form. Or you form a corporate, a C-corporation. And you can turn that into an S-Corp by filling out a tax form. It's not some special corporation. It's a tax designation. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it just depends upon your situation, what you're trying to do. Erica Williams, someone I thought was killing it on Facebook. Then three years later, nothing that happens. Do not hate. Use that energy to do something else. That's why I did not get involved. That's why I stayed above the fray. I mean, it was hard because I wanted to throw some more mud. But I was like, you know what? They're going to keep hating and they're going to destroy their businesses. And that's what happened to some of them. Uh, Cartel 007. An LLC is a limited liability company. That's all. Um, Mr. Mill, what's the difference between a business trust and LLC? There's a lot of differences. You know, some trusts don't have to pay taxes. Some trusts don't have an EIN. Some trusts do. I mean, that's a lot of stuff to go into. But the big thing with trust, if you don't have any assets, there ain't no point in having a trust. Whereas an LLC, you don't have a business, you can still start one and benefit from it. What's up, Malachi Stafford? Charles Smith, yeah, or you have to stop doing business with people and start a, and then start a new LLC as an operating. Midwest, energy goes where energy flows. I, I got to agree with that because... A lot of people that I see who are messy and start stuff, they really just don't go far because like I'm not wishing anything bad on her. And I kind of like her, Cardi B. But right now she's just a mess. And that's why she's everyone. And that's why, you know, she's so real and everyone loves her. That kind of energy usually burns out. Like you look at um, Smokey Robinson, right? Smokey, I'm going to show you some because I don't know if he's I think he's still alive. Smokey Robinson. Uh, yeah, he he still, he is still. I'm gonna show you some here. Once I get my thing together. All right. Now this is Smokey. Now Smokey Robinson is. How old is he? So he is 78 years old, right? Oh, let's go and do this. He's a cool dude. Smokey Robinson, Ned Worth. So, you know, that is the thing about having good energy. Oh, and I'm going to show you someone else, too. Uh, Lionel Richie net worth. Uh, cause he's got, apparently he's got some tax problems, but when you get into tens of millions of dollars, that's kind of normal, unfortunately, cause they'd be, they'd be on you. So 200 minutes. Now, here's two people who've been making music for decades. And they've, you know, and, and the thing is, do you hear any new Lionel Richie songs on the radio? That's a trick question because he writes for people and more than likely you have. He made a lot of his, you know, he wrote, um, let me make sure 
river in the stream rider. I think he wrote this. Islands in the string. Uh, let's see. Boom, 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 boom. Don't know it. All right. So, um, this is another lesson about something you can put in the trust. Islands, and ah, there we go. So. Hmm. All right, so Dolly Parton and Kenny Rogers wrote that. He wrote another song. I can't remember it from someone that it is. He wrote he wrote country. He wrote a lot of stuff. But let's say Lionel. He can put his publishing and royalties and lyrics inside of a trust because those are assets that make money. And he could do anything he wants. More than likely, he does. I'm just saying that once you get into this game on on a, on a certain tip, right, the things you can do, and I'm going to tell you something that happened to me today. Well, I'll tell you two things that happened to me today. I'm going to get out of here because I'm not bringing those up there. Um, from a friend of mine went to small claims court. She was freaking out, so I went with her. That's where I was this morning. And... It has changed so much because, you know, she, it's nothing like what happens on Judge Judy. And no, no, and Mathis ain't nothing like that. Because, see, what they do is they buy your case. They have you sign papers because a real judge can't talk to you like that. It's called impertinent conduct. But there's so many things that you can do. And this is why I'm all about the family LLC. If you're a single dude, you need to get you one. Pay those administration fees until while you figure out some stuff. Let your LLC age. You got to do it. Yeah, let's see. What's up, Green Machine? Keyboy DFS. My wife has a business. Should she have an LLC for taxes? What kind of business does your wife have? What's up, Mr. Mel? Cody Wyman? <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Joshua Hill, could the ex take out a life insurance policy behind the other person's back in order to gain more? Yes. Anybody can take out a life insurance policy on anybody. They don't care as long as those premiums get paid. They don't care. Erica Williams. Oh, there's a video of her having a meltdown in Dubai saying she was miserable and had all this money but was sad. Yeah, that drama would need some counseling. Sounds like a young person. The Wild Jones that helps that his homie was Barry Gordy in Motown. I mean, you look at Lionel Richie, Smokey Robinson. There's still many people of Marvin Gaye. Marvin Gaye's estate still makes money. Eric Williams. I saw Lionel Richie in the Austin, Texas. He was he was still dancing. You ever notice that a lot of these guys? who still perform, even though they're in their 70s, they still have a youthfulness about them. They still are doing stuff. Oh, he co-wrote We Are the World. Yeah, um, essentially, as uh, Quincy Jones said, Michael was a gangster. Fred722. The George Lopez with the wife giving him a kidney and they divorced. Wow. I was just making that up. I didn't know that happened for real. Eric Williams, Lionel Richie wrote three times a lady and was inspired by his dad's wedding anniversary speech to his mom. His dad says, whereas there's a check when it hit him on the charts. <laughs> well, once again, this, the whole world was different. Dolly Parton is making millions. Know that. That's that's it. I will always love you. That's what she wrote. Because Lionel wrote a lot of country songs, but Dolly Parton, Kenny Rogers, 
also wrote a lot of R&B songs. A lot of people don't know that. He wrote Lady. Okay. What's up, Albert Lau? Uh, she has a baking business. Does she conduct business in a bakery or does she do it out of the kitchen? Oh, Carly P's had a meltdown <laughs> already? Like I said, I mean, she's a, she's a twisted soul. Art and Gunfo, I mean, because they still have audiences. Oh, no, George Lopez gave his wife the kidney, and she bounced. He was acting up. So she made off with his kidney. Could George get his kidney back since they divorced? I wonder. I know I'm being ratchet right now. But the importance of doing this stuff is so... I can't, I can't really... I don't even have the words to say how important this stuff is because... From my advantage, from me, to be able to walk around, not be high and be honest about my situation. And it's all through the powers of LLC and corporate law. I mean, I got pulled over today. I got pulled over because I had a lot on my mind. I was just zooming, right? And I don't know if because the vehicle was in a corporate name, but do get first warning I ever got in my life. I got, well, no, not the first one. He gave me a warning. I was like, thank you, officer. Appreciate it. Have a nice day. I was like, wow, I got a warning. That's incredible. Because <laughs> I was gone. And part of that, I, I, like I'm going to tell you, having your vehicle in a corporate name will keep you from getting pulled over for BS. If there, if you're just a black man in America and you want to reduce the stress of living in America, get you a corporation, put your car in your corporate name, and watch what happens to you on these traffic stops. It's been it's been my norm, but you get a different level of respect. It's really really crazy. Out the kitchen, uh, keyboard DFS. Uh, if she doesn't make a GMF, no, she don't need one. Uh, she will need one if she gets bigger than that. Well, thank you, Wayne Johnson. Green Machine, that was Lionel Richie's song. George is naughty. <laughs> so th this is some of the stuff that you got to do right now. Now, um... Uh, the Wild Jones Report, curious, have any of these celebrity high-income entertainers or athletes come to you for financial consultations? No. No one you would know. I've had some regular people, you know, I should say regular, I should say none, I should say high net worth, non-famous people. But nobody you would know, no athletes, nothing like that. Cool. Joshua Hill, is there a limit to the amount or types of assets you can put in a corp? Nope. If you are like, you know how people will insure their legs or will insure parts of their body because that's how they make their money? I think J-Lo insured her legs for $2 million. You better believe that was part of an LLC, that, just, that policy. And I'll get into insurance later. Sure thing, keyboard. Keyboy, keyboy. I'm not messing up your name anymore. It makes sense not to bring judicial harm to mobile corporations. That's slick. I, dude, I'm telling you. Oh, thanks. So, because this is why <clears throat> when I see the PBS specials about these, these ranchers in wherever they were, and they were worried about estate taxes. I'm just like, there's a way that you could have handled that easily. Because, see, this, this is something else, too, that you can do. You know that you control the value of your corporate stock. Now, I just said something that was crazy valuable there. Take it, what, take it for what it is.
So that that's part of it. All right, so let's get into this because uh, uh, Patty contacted me and some people were confused about a few things. So let's clear up the confusion, and I'm going to go ahead and get in there before we get in there, if that makes sense. All right, so what I'm going to do is exit this screen, and what we're going to do is go to Bundles, and what we're going to do is... Go here, and then we're going to get back in the bundles, and then we're going to go to. I think this is the one. All right, because we had a question. Now, the 1099, because you know tax 1099, you know self-employed person. Um, these are radically different. They do share some of the same courses, but they don't share everything. Because uh, I need to put the business course in here. Matter of fact, while I'm, I'm here, <clears throat> let's see. Let's go back and... Preview this, edit this. I thought that was in there. Oh, it's already in there. Never mind. I am tripping. All right. So the question was hide the money, All right? I, I will probably do that <clears throat> this weekend. How to hide money, cash flow intensive, disrupting. All right. This is what's in here plus um, and the child support. All right. And what's in here. It's, t you know, there's like uh, they share the child support and that's it so that is the difference because I was looking at it and I think some of you have kind of saved some stuff and you haven't refreshed it because I've changed the prices of everything but there's a big difference because um, one of the things I'm going to do is there's a lot of content I cannot put on YouTube there's a lot of things I cannot talk about on YouTube and I've always wanted, I was like, you know what? I'm going to put it here in the hustle papers. Because uh, it was going to be a blog, but I'm going to get really real and gritty and all this other stuff. So that's going to be that. And that will be part of Fat Cat Secrets to Building Blocks of Wealth. So, because uh, there were some people who were, <laughs> now hide the money. Let's Let's talk about this. Hide the money is what my life used to be like. And one of the reasons I got on this corporate tip, thanks to Francine, my partner, because I was in a situation where I had to make money off the books. And I'm going to talk about those experiences and tell you what I did and how you can do them, too. Because, you know, it's like I, I wrote a book called Pimping Craigslist for Fun and Profit. And this thing in this. Those things still work. Now, the book is not as effective as it used to be because Craigslist has made a lot of changes. But I'm going to put that in there. And in the child support court, I'm going to put like how to hide the money. It's going to be its own separate course. What to do if you're already on child support already. That'll be in hide the money. And how to live off the glid in plain sight. That will be in hide to money. Because I'll just kind of briefly go do an overview of it. When I was in that boarding house and I was working all those crappy jobs, I had to pay child support. That's why I had two jobs. And then when I got to rent a crate, then, you know, she was talking about going back for reconsideration. It's like every time I get a raise, every time you get a raise, I get a raise, you know, and they can do that every two years. So when I got in the situation where I started making real nice money, you know, when I got past 10K a month, and I started realizing, you know, we had two kids. She'd get like close to three grand. I'm serious, you know. And I was like, and knowing that this pigeon that I was messing with and how lazy she was, I will say this. And my daughter is very disgusted with her mother. Um, she just couldn't keep a job. I mean, my daughter doesn't even talk to her mother. And that's not me. 
that's her decision. And that was something that she was doing even before um, we had the situation we have now. But that's what led me to storage auctions because storage auctions were an all cash business. You pay for the units in cash, no record, no, tr no way they can trace it. You get paid in cash at the flea markets. And I was like, when I, when I really realized what I had before me, I was like, I got to scale this up. I got to scale this up. And then my partner comes in and she's like, well, you know, I can do the LLC and we can run all of the stuff through that. Bet. More money, more money. So I'll just be talking about those things. And cash flow intensive, it'll be how to get the business out of your head and up and running. I'll be talking about that. They'll be real brief. So these things are radically different. Now, uh, I, as I said before, I've gone through the university and I have made most courses because you come off this page other than the bundles. Everything is like 99, 99. And I don't think that's just a course. I need, I think I'm going to keep that like that. Yeah. Because there's not much there. Well, there's some there. But most things are like 99 bucks. 49, 49, 99. Well, there's nothing there yet. 99, 99, 9, 49, 24. So I made a lot of high quality information, very affordable because I got love for the peeps out here. I got love for my people, my peeps. You know, we tight like that. So the links below for those of you who want these courses, and that should solve any confusion on what's the difference between them there's a vast difference because i'm probably going to build that out super super nice and tomorrow i'll be addressing hide the money because you know we had to go to court uh because my friend she really supported me doing my situation and she was freaking out i was like i'll come with you so that should solve those problems Uh, what's up, Archangel? Jerome Carter, side note, when you get a corporation, you're talking about an SLC because LLC is often referred to as a company, right? Yes, for most of us, I am talking, <clears throat> Let, let's, let's address that. Unless you're going to do a startup like Facebook, Amazon, where you're going to be trying to raise money and you're going to have to give out shares, don't even mess with a C-Corp. It don't really make any sense for the average person without a team because, you know, you're probably going to need at least four or five officers. Uh, you're going to need to raise money. LLC will do you just fine because the C-Corp is more like for, for you know, one day you want to be on the New York Stock Exchange. I mean, that's how you got to set it up from day one. What's up, Rashida? You getting on your Trump stuff, Green Machine? What's up, Johnny Walden? I mean, part of the thing for you to be successful, right? I've had some stuff where people did me dirty, did me wrong. But I can't continue to be mad at them and continue to hate them because that will hold me back. So, because I had other names, and I'm quite sure you can know what these names were. But I've moved on. And I'm going to keep moving on and I'm going to keep getting better and I'm going to keep making more money and I'm going to keep being happy because I can I can just feel that my happiness is causing someone else misery and that ain't really my problem. So, you know, you just can't stay stuck and angry at people. Really? The taxes? Oh, you got some other stuff going on, Cody. Zola, Glennon, when you had the snafu when you made the million plus with new office furniture and took home 35, did you have to pay extra in child support that year? Uh, that was something that was really tagging me hard. And once I got into the storage auction business, that problem disappeared because my income became untraceable. 
That was that's just one of the most best things. And I think that was my motivation for working it so hard because there is something fundamentally wrong with you working very, very hard, and then you have the government take 30-some percent, then you have an ex-wife, you got two kids, that's 23%. So that's 53% of your money gone before you got it. That's just something wrong with that, and I wasn't having it. I see sense of reality. Because uh, the reason he asked that, and I know why, I have a friend. Daryl, if you're listening, um, he had a year where he did 150K. He had a few years. They based his child support on 150, right? But after he got laid off, the only jobs he can get were like 80, but his child support was based on that 150. I know exactly why Zola's asking that question because that happens to a lot of men. They will base your child support at the height of your income, even if you ain't making that now. So you got some people who are literally paying 30% of their income in child support for one kid. That's why I'm just like, I mean, I've heard the stories, and this is why, like, I'm not taking one for the team. I'm not going out like that. I'm going to fight this, and I won. So that that's just one of the reasons that all this stuff is, because the other day when I did that video, I was thinking, if I got this information before I got married, if I knew all this stuff, I wouldn't have went through homelessness and all this other stuff. This would have never happened. And that's why I'm sharing this with you guys because a lot of guys who are young and, you know, and they're smelling the breast and just all up in the moistness and they they just caught up and they don't realize. And I'm not wishing harm on anyone. And I'm not wishing for your relationship to go bad. I hope you get married and stay married. But in case some does go funky, I am here to tell you that metamorphosis can happen. That sweet, innocent little creature that you laid down and had kids with, she can turn into an agent from the Matrix. Just like that. Just, just like that. And you, you, you doing Neo stuff and you dodging bullets. The app upload. Does the PayPal? Yes, they do. If you do 20,000 or 200 transactions, they sure do. Since the reality, goodness, I need to make sure and make a trust before getting married. Even Lucia has turned the little red pill in his uh, Deception Stoppers video. The, the thing is, it is so fundamentally unfair that it will make you go a certain way. It really will. It will take you there. It will take you there. Are you doing any investing outside of your marketing and your holding company? Uh, I don't know. You're, you're probably not on uh, my other page. My plan is, my plan is to take my passive income and buy real estate. Um, I feel, and I could be wrong, but I feel that we're due for a correction. And I feel it's going to be very severe and it's going to be massive. And I don't want to be part of it. And I currently, I have no holdings in any marketplace. I have no stock or nothing. And I got to do something with that. Perceptions, I mean, that's just how bad it is. I'm going to have to check him out as soon as this stream is over because y'all keep bringing him up. Uh, Joshua Hill, with business, business, uh, when, what about business ventures started together? Is that automatic? Well, one, it depends. What did you talk about? What conversation did you have? Did you just start a business and think it was 50-50, but you're doing 75% of the work and you got a case of the angries because you're doing all the work, but this other person was hat. I mean, you got to be, you got, and that's a good place to write out rules and roles in the articles of organization. Who does what, who gets what, and write in consequences if, if this thing doesn't happen. All right, so. That's it. Now, for those of you who want, just to remind everybody that most of the courses are $99. So I don't want to, you know, because uh, I, I forgot to send out this thing to the email list, but I'll, I'll do that later. So that's the high. This is where how to hide your money will be. Work on that tomorrow. And this is. The Hustler's Paper, the course. I mean, I'm going to get very, very 
deep into this. And this has things like this right here. I'm doing my, and one of the reasons that it's taking so long to build this out is I'm putting stuff in there that's going to be evergreen. Things are not going to change. You know, even if they change the laws, it's just going to affect it a little bit. So it's taking me some time to, to set this up, but that's going to be real nice. And then when I get into this and there's some other stuff, there, there is, um, there's some crazy stuff that's coming. So the links are below the video for most of these courses, or you can scroll through the courses because I think under the videos, there's a link to virtually every course and you just grab it and check out. So hopefully that answered anyone's questions that was a little confused. Let me see if he's still here. Johnny, I'm 50, so you're saying before I get married, get my finances set right? Pretty much, marriage is a financial institution. Make sure your money's right. No, I don't, I don't address investing because I don't talk about, I could invest, talk about it a little bit, but um, I don't really, I don't talk about things like that that I'm cur not currently doing. When jumps to do I have to get another LLC to make it a holding company? Yep. Ninja boy dirty story. <laughs> what do you think about the public? Uh, I, I'm, I'm not really because I'm trying to keep the content of this channel a certain way so I don't get into these current events. That's funny. Thanks, Baroque. That's funny. All right, so real quick before I go to the dirty story. Okay. Miss Classy. Okay. When I met her, oh, God, this was so long ago. How many of y'all were messing around on Plenty of Fish? Does that still exist? Well, this is what happened. I had a date with a nurse, and she was acting all ignorant, just... Some she wanted to go on this dream date, and you know, she was just like, I don't know, you're too short. Yes, at six one, I'm too short. And then I was talking to other people, and we had a date, and she canceled at the last minute. And then I had found Miss Classy, and I had liked her profile, and I accidentally hit favorite. And I left it, I was like, Oh, well, I don't really care. So she cancels. And then I go to my computer, and Miss Classy has responded. So I'm your favorite, huh? And I was like, what are you doing tonight? And she said, nothing. I said, let's go out. So we go out. I meet her at Cumberland Mall. She looks way better than her profile pictures and stuff. Like, I'm doing this. It's like, are you the same chick? We go. We have a nice little meal and everything. Then you know, since we're at Cumberland Mall and we parked down by Costco because the eating section had was like about toward the middle of the mall. So we just took one car because, you know, parking is crazy up there. And on the way back and everything, you know, I was really feeling her. I mean, really, really feeling her. So I was like, I want to take you. I think I don't want to take you home. And I put her hand on my erect. You know what was erect? This is YouTube because you say anything, they start flagging stuff. And I was like, and she's like, I don't know. I was like, I do. So I get in my car. I follow her home and we have to stop and get condoms at Walmart. So I go in Walmart and I was like, I'm going to come out. She'd be gone. Nope, she was still there. And then we did what we did. Had a good time. It was a nice night and everything. And then I found out that she was bipolar. When she's in her regular mind, she's the sweetest, nicest girl there is. And when she's not herself, she's an agent. Like a foul mouth saying some of the most crazy, outlandish, off the world wall stuff you ever heard. And then I told her, I said, look, I can't mess with you no more. She went to the doctor and she got some uh, Prozac. You know, she called them her happy pills. And she sent me this long email. I'm sorry. I'm taking my happy pills, as she called them. 
And then she would go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And fortunately for me, I knew that she couldn't get pregnant. So, you know, I was doing my thing. And then uh, she sent an email. And my partner was over my shoulder when she saw this email. And she's like, so she sleeps with you on the first date, but she's talking about now she needs respect and she's a lazy. Tell Miss Classy. <laughs> That's how she got the name, Miss Classy. <laughs> Percy, you talk so bad about her. <laughs> oh, Miss Classy, huh? <laughs> So that's how she got it. That that was funny. What's up, Dwayne Bryant? Never had luck with PO. I had outstanding luck with plenty of fish. This was like twelve years ago. Wow. No fish for me. <laughs> Actually, she was a VP of the company up in Kennesaw uh, she had this beautiful home where she lived in by herself she was quite lonely quite lonely all right so you guys got your marching orders you know if you want a course they're currently you know most of them are 99 bucks so you can just there's no more discounting so you can just go ahead and get what you need and hopefully we're set with the corporate stuff because I'll be back uh, 6 p.m. Monday no 5 I'm sorry 5 p.m. Monday and there will be more video content, which I'll create this weekend. So I don't know what time that's going to drop, but I will be back for the live streams 5 p.m. Monday. Sounds like you, Jennifer Lewis book. Who's Jennifer Lewis? That's how she sounds through the book, Sexy People and Going Crazy. Nurses and Teachers. There's something I want to say about that, but I, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. All right, you folks, thanks for joining me today. You have a great weekend. I will see you again at 5 p.m. Monday. Be sure to subscribe. Be sure to share this video with someone you love. And I am out.